Hello, everybody. My name is Irrelevant. What is relevant is my message to you. Many of you believe that you are free, that you are free to live life however you want. You are free to associate with whoever you will and do whatever you may. And to an extent, this is true. You are free to associate where you will do what you may. But there is a difference between free range and freedom. I stole that quote from a very cool film called Statism is Dead. Um, but the truth applies. Like Just like chickens that have the freedom to roam around in their pens in the areas designated, so too are we allowed to associate with who we will, do what we want. But ultimately, the fate is just the same. We are exhausted from birth. As soon as we are ready to be indoctrinated, we are taken into school pens and indoctrinated and conditioned to be ready to contribute as a cog toward our working economy. And the rest of our lives, unless you are born into riches or come by a very, very deep stroke of luck, is devoted to the system as a working cog. This affords us a little bit in return, though we give much more of ourselves in the process and of our lives. So, at the end of it, with the illusion of freedom, and you can buy nice things, you can afford uh, entertainment and uh, services and whatnot, which, hey, would not exist if it were not for the economy to begin with. So you, one must appreciate the fruits that are both on the tree. However, what does this tree grow from? What seeds, in principle, does it grow from? Well, when one takes a look at it, one realizes that our economy is established on nothing more than the principles of manipulation and competition and deception. So, then we think, okay, so we're getting these fruits, and yeah, we might have to exploit each other a little bit to get them and compete with each other, manipulate people in order to keep on top, not just to survive, but to live a little on the side, you know? Give and take. You do have to break a few omelets in order to make an egg, right? But the issue is, we are at a loss. We are at a, in, a, a, a priceless, priceless loss. You cannot put a price to what we are losing, but if you could, it, it would be big. It would be very big. It would be so big, uh, you would need many wallets to contain the amount of money to fit the price. You know what I'm saying? We are at a loss for something huge. We are at a loss for opportunity. Opportunity to be who we really are inside and to become furthermore who we really are inside without being interrupted by the inconsistent, repetitious flow of work and other necessities imposed on us. I believe one must need to work, but to work five days a week and have two days off to recuperate and binge to help justify all of it, it's just absurd. We have come so far, we have built so high, but still we must dedicate more than half, more than 75% of our week and a great portion of those days that leaves often people feeling as exhausted at the end of it and all they can afford to do is just sit, sit, sit down, get home, sit down in front of the TV and just zone out or drink or do something else which helps uh, numb the pain or help them feel like the time off work is worthwhile and that they are enjoying themselves or just to numb them, just to help them relax, just to, to ease the tension and the stress. Add children into the mix and families, well many people are struggling. At the end of each day they are tired and then they've got to return to a, to a family which is further more disparate and, and less in harmony because the parents cannot be there for the kids from, for all the passing moments. They have to put them into childcare from a very young age so as to afford the necessities and the bread on the table and the mortgage and whatever. So 
you know, a half of the time that children is being raped by other people or groups of people and many influences bundled uh, beyond their control and from a very young age. And this is this is affecting who these people are becoming in the, in their initial you know design of their being. This stuff in a sense fractals out and it regenerates itself. Basically, the the changes that you make to someone at a very young age, it it, it will fundamentally influence their inclinations and their behaviors for the future. And a lot of the time, the parents, what I'm saying, they're not there most of the time. They they're, they're with daycare and all these influences, and then the television when they get home and they're so tired, they don't want to use the rest of their time and devote all of it to giving the children the education they need and the love and the nurturing they need. They'll give them some of it, but then they'll be happy to leave them play with friends or leave them in front of the TV or the game or the internet these days, uh, or their phones will keep them occupied even. So there's becoming there's, there's less harmony in the fact in the, in the general household. Um, there's less you know people are, they're more disparate within the families themselves. People are more uh, separate from each other, more isolated, not as connected anymore. We are losing that that intimacy in our families and in, in, in our friendships. You know these days it suffices for most people after a hard day at work to come home and go on the on the internet and then did, you know you can connect to all those of interest online and say hi, share, share the important happenings of your day and all this. And for a lot of people that are so busy in their life with work and other errands and things they need to do, this, this is enough half the time to constitute a social life. Half the time the idea of a social life is being met. And it'll be way too much energy to invest to go out for some of these people with few people to do much. People still go out, people still coordinate things. And, and do things in person, this is great. This is what we need to keep doing to actually connect with people in person, not just connect with people online. But there is a trend I'm noticing where even when people are connecting in person, let's say, you know, I, as a waiter, I, I used to work as a waiter, and I, I noticed people, you know, family gatherings and whatever, groups for four people, six people, sitting at a table, and one or two of the girls or guys or whoever, some of the people at the table, will be on their phones and they will be Facebooking and chatting to other people. So what I'm saying is that we are displacing our focus. Um, and this is a, a direct result of the economy and the way that the economy works, the pressures it is exerting, that we feel that in the free time that we have, we've got to try to fit in as much as we can. That's why it's all about pace and style and entertainment and pace. We, we don't really, when we're watching television or, or works of art, theater or whatever, we don't take the time to really contemplate, to really, to really absorb what is going on and realize on a deeper level what it means to us and how it affects us and the implications of the material we are witnessing. We, we are up to stimulus, constant pace and stimulus. And I tell you, constant stimulation creates a need for constant stimulation. That's the problem. But the, the thing is, it wouldn't need to be so constant. The pace wouldn't need to be so important if we had more time to indulge in, in a wide array of phenomena in life. If we had the time to contemplate on the deeper meanings of things, except now we, we try to finish so much and condense more into less time. And this is what leads to this, this, this speeding up, this, this com complication of life, of getting, uh, dividing our focus and our energies into too many things at once, which, you know, in one would understand if you had a whole lot of different plants and different flowers, it would be better to focus on a few and feeding them sufficiently, giving them enough water to survive and nutrients, as opposed to dividing one bucket's worth of water over the whole garden, and eventually they all die because of insufficient nutrients and water. And this is what it is like. The quality of any of the particulars in our life is starting to degrade because we are spreading ourselves too thin throughout a, a, an ever-stretching array of things to do, things we need to do, things we want to do, and it's it's harder to focus on any one thing and develop it to a to a, a genuine state of fruition because we're constantly segmenting our hours, our days up and in, in, in breaking everything apart, and it's it becomes contrived to try and develop something fluently over a series of days. You know, if at, at anything we make gradual process, but the thing is. It's still always gradual, and it's never just wavy, man. Like in the 
days where they talk about going with the flow. It's harder now to go with the flow because you've got to build structure and time. You've got to budget your time and your energy and everything. So it's harder to just go with the flow. It's harder to just sit around for a few days doing what you want to do. Go for a walk outside. You want to see some friends, you go to see some friends. You have conversation, you feel inspired. You, you make some music with them and that gives you your energy. So you go out, you play some sport and you get rid of the energy and you go home and you start shutting off more physically because you're exhausted now and you start thinking to yourself more mentally and contemplating on things because you're still hyped up from the day's events and inspiration and you get an idea for something and then you sit on that for a few days you keep doing what you want to do but you're not distracted by anything that, that pushed on to you or you're, you're somehow coerced into doing and you're not distracted you keep doing what you want to do and you, that, the idea that you would get you just keep running with it and it grows and it becomes something worthwhile at the end of it you see fruition the completion of a project in one set in motion. However, now, without having to separate everything and budget everything, it's like if you had a group of people, like uh, different members of a band, you know, it, the, the greatest of creations happen in the heat of the moment, in the passion of the moment, spontaneity. It just happens like that, like magic. Now, if somebody has a sudden inspiration, a, a raw surge of inspiration through them in a band, they run with it, they pick up their instruments, and they play, and they, you know, they may record it so they can reflect on it afterwards, and then refine it, use the ideas from it, whatever. But at the time, it's that inspiration. You've got to get on board it like a train as soon as it zooms past. Otherwise, you miss it. Now, if you try to slow down the train, or if we divide things out throughout the days, you know, and you know, we get on the train, go to a few stations, then we stop, we do do other stuff, get off, do some other stuff, and then we come back, and then we you know, going back on the train, it's it's hard to try to get the momentum again, to keep getting, get that train to where it really could have gone originally, and that is what I am saying about life and the economy, and this, this need to work five days a week, when you would think that the more people there are, the less hours we could work, but there's always this need to create more jobs, to create more shackles, to create more need for work, I don't understand, like, why do we need to keep creating more the more people we have, I, I get that, but it's like an exponential need for more. Can it not get to a point where, you know, and the other issue is the way that we're producing things is, is, is obsolete is key. Nothing is built to last with integrity that we can actually afford. We can create and produce things that will last you a lifetime, a long time, and you will not need to keep buying upgrades or keep getting repairs or new, new versions altogether. You know, but there's this constant need of new is better. There's this constant need of things breaking down and having to repair, replace. And it's deliberate. It's to keep things rolling on. So I'm saying, no, I'm not complaining. I'm not saying I advocate anarchy. I know that anarchy would take the world down into a dark hole that you would, you would not want to go. You would not want to see what happens there. We are animals. We are selfish. And the world would literally be about manipulation and suffering and cruelty. And that would be the basis of our life. At least now there is some luxury for those in the Western world in particular for those with the advantage of being born in the right place under the right leadership or just in the right scheme um, but big picture wise it's all the same and we are missing out we are missing out on a great opportunity of life because of the economy basically I got stuck for a moment the, the basic point was I, I'm not advocating anarchy but what I am saying that do we really need to be working so much and investing so much of our lives that in time that we could be spending with our family, uh, with our friends, uh, developing ourselves as people, developing our ideas, our art, whatever the form, our inspirations. I think that we really need to start looking at the principles of the economy. Is it something that we are building for? Is the future that we are building towards this constant need to build more jobs, this constant need to, to build up the economy is the future that we are building and moving towards a future in which we are free, in which we do not have to work so much anymore, in which we can finally step back with the fruits of our labor and enjoy life and develop those inspirations and develop those connections and those bonds and all the beautiful and amazing and glorious things that come of it that we can only really truly imagine at this point in time. Is that what we are working towards, a day where we can be free and enjoy the fruits of our labor? Or are we working so that we can keep laboring, so we can keep working to ensure that there are more jobs for others to keep working and working? Now, I see no reason in the world why we cannot work three days a week, four days a week. 
I mean, there is the option. You can work as, as you know, you can work three days, four days a week. No one's making you work full-time. You can get casual or part-time. But these days, it's, the cost of living is so hard to get by. Just to survive, you need a part-time job. Just to survive. If you want to live a little, if you ever want to buy anything, maybe you're better getting a full-time. But part-time, you can, you can survive. And then people say, well, why don't you just do that? What are you talking about, you crazy freak? You could just go part-time. Why are you saying, oh, work, slaves, we need to do this, we need to do that, we can't develop our inspirations. Why don't you just get a part-time job and you don't need to buy all those material possessions. You don't need to have extra money besides what you need to survive. You can do what you're saying and just be inspired and, you know, connect with your friends and your family. The thing is, we can't. We can't connect with our friends and family. Why? Because they're too busy working. Because they're too locked up in necessity with their families, with their mortgages. The thing is, now it's so hard with everyone on their own scheme of necessity to f a lot of times where everything just slots in together and we can all truly share a moment together. There's so much budgeting on all fronts, so much having to plan and coordinate our movements together just to afford an evening where everything is in harmony enough to work together. In this society, one cannot just have no money, have, have no car, just have enough money to survive, but have no material possessions. You need status, you need to have some money in order to go out, socialize, lunch, uh, have things to entertain. This is a materialistic society. Without money, without anything to offer, which other people will, other people can entertain, other people can go out, have a drink, buy a cookie or a coffee without having to, you know, count up how much that's going to affect how much money they have in their wallet, which is very nil, next to nil. You know, people that don't have to bother with these considerations who work full time and devote more of their life, despite the cost, to having more money and possessions will obviously attract more friends. Those that don't, well, it's harder for them to connect because at the end of the day, it is attractive to have money, to be able to do stuff, to be able to buy things. So you become isolated, you become somewhat alienated and confined to a, to a type of uneducated, unsuccessful, a lot of the time drugs is the basis for the kind of people that, you know, just survive. You know, it's hard to have a fruitful relationship with progressive people that aren't working. You know what I'm saying? That aren't investing their whole lives into this. So it's hard to connect with people and just be, because for, for what I'm saying to, to apply this whole idea of us working less hours, even if we have one day off a week, Wednesday is off, Wednesday. So we work no more than two days at a time. We work Monday and Tuesday. We have Wednesday off to unwind. And then we have Thursday and Friday. And then we have the weekend, Saturday, Sunday off to unwind. And Friday night. That would be great. You never have to work five days in a row and exhaust yourself. And then you have to make up for it on the weekend by going out and binging or spending your money and just splurging on whatever to, to make up for you know all this, all this work you've been doing. You would have two days on and a day off. You wouldn't be so exhausted and fatigued and... Flunked, you know, you'd be, you'd be cool, you know, and you'd have time to develop ideas instead of having a five-day break and coming home and exhausted and sleep, tuning to the box or whatever. You have two days on, yeah, you could do that. Stick it out for two days at work, keep your idea just alive throughout those two days, and then on the third day off, bam, reignite, give it momentum. Before the momentum s truly slows down on your train of inspiration, after a five-day waiting period, a two-day wait maximum would make a huge difference. So one day off. Wednesdays off. Are we not so advanced in our technologies and how far we've come as a society, as a civilization, and as an economy within, to, to afford one day off? Do we need to work five days a week in order to achieve a standard set, a comfortable and, and rewarding lifestyle where we can connect with others who on average are at that same point? All of us. Not just a few people part-time, but most of us on full-time so it's harder for us as a society, as a larger group of peoples, or even smaller circles, to connect with each other because the basis is that, you know, as a basis, we can't have every person working part-time. We need the full-timers. But what if we all work for five days a week, four days a week, three days off, Wednesday off? That's all I'm asking. And that's basically the point I've been heading towards is, have we not come far enough? So we can look back and see that things aren't changing for the better. We are not working towards a future of freedom, but we are working towards an ever-continual presence of working. Every single time we remove a brick in front of us, we place a brick behind us. 
And then we turn around again at the end of the day. And we keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Picking up the brick, placing it behind us, turning around, picking up that brick or climbing over it, picking it up, putting it before us. Whatever way you want to look at it, it's not progressive and it's not going anywhere. So all I'm saying is we need to start really thinking about our intentions with our lives and what we are working towards. Because seriously, I would rather have a lot less of the material possessions that I do and, and a lot less of what, you know, the things that I am working for if I could actually have the time and the people available, other people that aren't caught up in this mad race to connect with and live life the way it's meant to be lived with vigor and passion, with imagination, with persistence, with inspiration, with ideas, with cooperation, with shared art, shared activity, shared sport, shared play, everything, just sharing. Life is for sharing. But when we are so caught up in this economy based on manipulation and deceiving and competing with each other, it makes it a lot harder for us to share and we get more lost and trivial matters. That's all I have to think about that. You know all I have to say. Wednesday's off. You know it's right.